Good afternoon and uh, welcome to another video for Maths World Education. And uh, in today's video I want to show you the uh, solution to uh, question number one from uh, the step uh, two of the 2019 paper. Now what I like about these particular questions, I always find that the first uh, questions are always like the most uh, accessible on the step paper questions. And the, the reason the examiners do this is for a reason. They're basically doing it to break the candidates in gently to uh, the exam. So uh, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the most easiest, but uh, nine times out of 10, there won't be, hopefully there won't be many things which the candidate doesn't quite understand. And it's normally uh, normally knowledge that's required at the syllabus is at uh, somewhat of a, a more basic level than uh, perhaps some of the more uh, advanced questions as you uh, progress into the exam. So let's, uh, so let's first of all talk about question one and what it's asking us to do here. So it's talking about a function f of x, uh, which equals x minus p uh, times g of x. Uh, and it's al also telling that g is a polynomial. Now it's talking about uh, showing the tangent as a curve, uh, y equals f of x at point x equals a. Uh, so already I can see here that it's going to require some differentiating to uh, find out what uh, the gradient is. Uh, and then first bit it's saying uh, a is not equal to p, and uh, that's going to be helpful. Uh, uh, later on in the question and it's saying show that it passes through uh, the point p0 if and only if uh, g dash of a equals 0 now normally with if and only ifs normally you've got to you've got to you've got to assume that it passes through p0 and then that implies that g dash of a equals 0 and then you've got to do the same in the opposite direction that by definition is uh, the essence of uh, if and only if and that's important because uh, I've noticed that sort of terminology uh, gets used quite a bit in these uh, step paper questions and um, it's also it's also the cornerstone of uh, a lot of um, more advanced uh, mathematics uh, at uh, university level anyway um, if you haven't already had a go at this question then be sure to pause this video and have a good stab at this question yourself uh, I, always, I say this in every video uh, you will get more out of uh, the problem if you decide to uh, give it some thought rather than just waiting for me to show you the solution. Uh, I also think it's critical for anyone's academic uh, development uh, for the six-term examination papers. So let's uh, jump straight in. So we've got this curve. Uh, we already know then that uh, f of x is equal to x minus p times g of x. So the best thing to do is to simply just differentiate uh, this function. So it shouldn't be too difficult. By just using the chain rule, we can see uh, that we've simply got g of x uh, plus, uh, and we've got x minus p times uh, g dashed of x. Uh, that, sh that should just be a g there. Uh, Sorry about my writing. Um, but we want to know what the gradient is at uh, x equals a. So at x equals a, uh, our gradient, uh, I'm just going to say that the gradient is m, uh, is going to be, I'm actually going to call it m1 because uh, it'll be more apparent later on. But m1 is equal to f dashed of a, uh, which is simply equal to g of a plus a minus p times g dash of a. Now I'm sure most of you are familiar with uh, the following equation where y, not that equation, y minus y1 is equal to m. Uh, I'm going to call it m1 in this case, uh, x minus x1. Uh, so therefore um, let's rearrange this equation to make y the subject. So y will be equal to g of a. Uh, what's going on? All right, guys. Uh, sorry about that. We had a few technical. Um, uh, we had a few technical difficulties uh, just there. So, uh, so what what we got then now? So we've got y is equal to g of uh, a plus a minus p times g dash of a. So that's simply, we just substitute in the gradient into there. 
x minus x1 plus y1. Now, first of all, we know uh, we know for sure uh, that it passes through the point x equals a, and so at so we can call this point x1. Uh, y1 will be simply will simply be equal to uh, f of a, which is uh, going to be a minus p times g of a. Uh, so that's So all that we need to do now is to substitute. Um, we need to substitute both of these values now into this equation here. So let's uh, let's do that. So we've got the equation of the first tangent. I'm going to put. I'm going to make that t1. So y is going to be equal to. I'm not. It's not my day today, guys. Uh, we've got g of a plus a minus p g dash of a times x minus a plus a minus p times g of a. Now what's it talking about here? It's saying so we've got this we've got this generic sort of equation now of t of t1. We, we found out what x1 is, we know what y1 is, we've substituted both these values into this uh, equation here to give us uh, the following here. Uh, hopefully you can see where I'm putting my mouse there. Now what we need to do, we need to suppose that it passes through p0. So let's just do, let's just, uh, do just that. So we, um, I'm just going to do a little boundary there so uh, you guys don't get confused. So suppose T1 passes through. So therefore, uh, when x equals p, y equals 0, right? Seems fair, doesn't it? So therefore, 0 is going to be equal to, again, we've got um, g of a plus a minus p times g dash of a, so nothing's uh, nothing's actually changed uh, there. And then we've got um, x minus a, so that's going to be uh, p minus a, uh, and that's plus uh, a minus p times g of a. Now, uh, what we can see here, if we take out a uh, factor of uh, p minus a, so we'll need to put a negative sign here so that we've uh, so this these brackets here also become p minus a. Uh, what you'll actually end up with is zero, which equals uh, p minus a, and then we have g of a as before, plus a minus p times g dash of a minus g of a. Well, that's brilliant. So we can see that these g of a's actually cancel. Uh, so therefore, we've got zero, which equals, uh, and what we can do, we can put a minus sign here. So we've got a minus p all squared times g dash of a. Now, because, um, because a is not equal to p, so that, that bit of information was given in the question, uh, we can actually see that the only uh, possible outcome is that g dash of a equals zero. Okay, um, so we've we've done the first bit, but uh, we need to prove it the other way around now. So we need to go back to um, we need to go back to t one. Uh, we need to go back to this equation here, and we need to um, now. Uh, try and show that it passes through uh, p0 if uh, g dash of a is equal to z uh, is equal to zero so uh, let's go back to let's I'm just going to copy and paste uh, the question and then we all go back to um, we'll go back to t1 so the equation for t1 uh, as before uh, was 
equal to let's have a look. We had y equals g of a plus a minus p g dash of a x minus a plus a minus p times g of a. Now, if g dash of a is equal to zero, this whole term here is going to cancel out and become zero. Okay. Uh, so therefore, uh, y will simply be equal to, I'm going to have a g of a uh, x, so I'm just multiplying out the brackets now guys, minus a g of a plus a g of a minus p times g of a. So the great thing is these uh, two terms in the middle cancel. So therefore y is going to be equal to uh, g of a and that's going to be g of a x minus p. Okay, uh, now at x equals p uh, y is equal to g of a times p minus p uh, and that whole thing cancels out becomes zero, which means that y equals zero. So therefore, t1, uh, that implies that t1 passes uh, through uh, p0. So we've proved it both ways, and that is the first part of the question complete. And now it's time to move on to part one. Okay guys, so uh, we've done the first part of the question, uh, so obviously that's going to be helpful uh, when it comes time to uh, uh, attack uh, the first part, which is part one. So it's talking about the, the, uh, the curve C with uh, this equation here. Uh, P, Q and R are constants, uh, P is less than Q, Q is less than R, A is a non-zero constant. Now it says the tangent to C at the point x equals A where x is not equal to P passes through the point P0. Uh, show that 2A equals Q plus R. So let's let's just do that first. We can focus on the expression a bit later. Um, so what's uh, what's going on here? Uh, what would also what would given it's given it's told as this equation of the curve, notice notice at the top here you've got an x minus p here, but you've also got an x minus p here as well, so um, by observation we can uh, a suitable choice for g of x would be uh, the following. Uh, we can actually let uh, g of x uh, be equal to a, uh, that's a times x minus q times x minus r. Okay, now what do we, you know, okay, so we know what g of x is. What does that tell us? You know, how, how does that help us progress forward? Well, it's already telling us that the tangent uh, to C uh, passes through the point uh, P0. Now, we know, uh, we found out before that it passes through P0 if and only if g dash of A equals 0. And, um, and again, uh, it's the same. It, it must be exactly the same tangent here, t, uh, t one that we found before, because it, uh, because it passes through uh, x equals a. So it makes sense if we uh, differentiate uh, g of x. So let's differentiate g of x and see how we get on. Uh, so g dash of x is going to be equal to. Um, let's have a look. That'll be two times a x minus a uh, q plus r okay uh, but we we want to know what g dash of a is so let's substitute x equals a so therefore we've got 2 times a times small a and then q plus r uh, and then what we can do is take out a factor of a uh, and then we've got 2a minus q 
plus r. Now, uh, basically, because it passes through p0, g dash of a must be equal to 0. In fact, it must be equal to 0 here. But it also tells us that a is a non-zero constant, so basically a can't be equal to 0. So basically, 2a minus uh, q plus r must be equal to 0, which means that 2a must be equal to q plus r. So uh, that's how we uh, come to that uh, come to that result here. But now it's saying find an expression for the gradient of this tangent in terms of a, q, and r. So what we need to do, we need to go back to the previous part and find out uh, the gradient of the tangent t1 uh, was simply equal to m1. So we, what we need to do is to uh, use this uh, expression uh, just here. Okay, so. Let's uh, let's do just that. Let's rewrite the uh, the gradient. So the gradient of the, <clears throat> the gradient of the tangent m one uh, will be equal to um, g of a plus a minus p times g dash of a. Now. Of course, uh, g dash of a is equal to zero. Anyway, uh, we you know we've just we've just established that, so we don't have to worry about the second term. Uh, all we need to do is to focus on uh, uh, finding what g of a is. So uh, g of a uh, from before was equal to a times a squared plus a times a small a rather, uh, q plus r plus a r q. Now you might be wondering how I've uh, come to this result here. So what I've done, all I've done is multiplied out the brackets from uh, here and then substituted x equals a. Okay, but it's uh, not asking for the expression uh, in terms of, um, uh, was it? it doesn't want it in terms of small a, so we need to do some substituting now. So what we need to do is to substitute this uh, this equation here into each of these different uh, well it, the first two terms anyway. So if we rewrite small a, that's just q plus r over two. Now we can substitute that into g of a. So m one, which is g of a, uh, is going to be a times q plus r all squared on 4 minus a times q plus r times another q plus r on 2 plus a r q. And so that implies that uh, m1 is equal to minus a over 4, so taking out a factor now, uh, q plus r all squared. So I'm combining those first two terms, uh, but we can we can actually take that a step further. We can, what we can do is multiply out the brackets now, so q squared plus 2rq plus rq, uh, plus r squared, and then minus 4rq uh, for the third term, uh, and that is minus a on 4, uh, q squared, so focusing now on this term and this term, 2 minus 4 is minus 2, so that's going to be minus 2rq plus r squared, uh, and now what we can do is we can factorise, so we've got q minus r all squared, and that is our final. Uh, that is our final answer for the uh, for the expression. So now, uh, what we need to do now is to have a look at uh, part two. So we're saying the tangent to C at the point. Uh, this time, it's talking about uh, another tangent that we can call T two um, with the point x equals C, such that uh, C does not equal R. Uh, passes through another point which is r0 
and now we've got a he says show that this tangent is parallel to the tangent of part one if and only if the tangent is c at the point where x equals q does not meet the curve again now that might seem a little bit hard to understand um my only advice if you ever come across something like this is just 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 take it one step at a time it's like it's like in if you, i don't know if you've seen creed 2 i know sorry I, th I think it's no no it's creed 1 actually where rocky says to creed you know he says he says look he says one punch at a time one round at a time okay don't you know don't be don't be afraid just to just to take a uh, tackle this in baby steps we've already found we've all like We've already found uh, the equation here, 2a equals q plus r. Well, there's no reason why we can't do something similar and just change the variables uh, by observation. But what I'm going to do anyway, just to make things a bit more straightforward, uh, I'm going to just I'm going to do the first bit all over again. So let's just so and if you've got any questions, be sure to comment in the comment section below. So. This is for part two. So we're going to let... Um, computer's not playing ball. Uh, we're going to let M2. Uh, that's going to be the gradient. So it's another it's another gradient of another tangent now that we're dealing with. Um, tangent T2. And this time that's at X equals C. So... By symmetry, we can let g of x be equal to something different, uh, uh, which would be a times x minus p, x minus q. Now you could call you could call it r of x or h of x, but I'm just gonna I'm, I'm just gonna keep it simple and call it g of x. Uh, now the reason I've got it like this is because if it's passing through, uh, if it's passing through um, the point um, uh, R zero, right? Then we're going to disregard uh, the x minus R uh, term, just like we did in part one with x. Since it passes through p in part one, uh, we let g of x equal the rest of that function. Well, there's no reason why we can't just do exactly the same thing by symmetry. So therefore, uh, just as before, we can differentiate uh, this function to get the um, to get the gradient. Uh, so we've got two big A times x minus a p plus q. Um, that's going to be equal to two. Uh, what am I doing? A times two x minus p plus q now you might you might be familiar now with what um what i'm actually showing you um now it's given that t2 uh passes through uh, r0 and that's if and only if uh g dashed of c uh, is equal to zero. Okay, so we just we all we do all we're doing there. Uh, we've done, it's nothing special. All all we've basically done is just change the variables around. Okay, we've changed we basically changed p for r and we've changed uh, yeah p for r and a for c. Okay, uh, so g dash of c is equal to zero, uh, which would imply that. Uh, to sorry uh, g dashed of c equals c, uh, zero um so if you imagine substituting x equals c into this equation here you'd get g dashed of c equals a times 2c minus p plus q uh, we know that a is non-zero so therefore 2c minus uh p plus q is equal to zero uh, and that implies that uh 2c equals p plus q. Okay, uh, so now what we need to do now is to find out. So we've got so we've got that 
uh, formula now. Uh, what we need to do now is to find out what um, M2 is. So M2 is the gradient. Uh, that's the gradient of uh, the second tangent. So M2 uh, we know is equal to uh, G of C. You know, uh, just as before, I'm just following exactly the same steps as before because we know that G dashed of C equals zero. So that's why you've only got a G, dash, uh, G of C there. Uh, so we've got M2 uh, is it going to be equal to A times P, P plus Q all squared over 4 minus A P plus Q uh, another P plus Q over 2 plus A P Q and what we end up with uh, after following all the steps as before is M2 equal to minus a over 4 q minus p all squared. Now, how does that help us now? So now we know what the we, we know what both we know what the equations of both tangents are. We know what the gradients of both of the tangents are. But now it's saying show that this tangent is power out of a tangent in part one if and only if the tangent to c at the point x equals q does not meet the curve again. So at this point I'm just going to suppose I'm just going to suppose that um, uh, both tangents are parallel uh, and then I'm going to try and divide the results and then and then I'll assume that um, and then I'll just see what happens when setting uh, both the equations equal to each other. Uh, so let's just go with that and see how we get on. So what we're going to do, uh, and I'll I'll just read that question out, guys, as well. Um, so we've done this bit, we've done this bit, we're sort of halfway through this bit. Um, so we suppose t1 is parallel to t2. Now that is if and only if the gradients are the same. It's the only way uh, they can both be equal. Uh, they can both be parallel to each other. So M1 is equal to M2. Now we know what M1 is, uh, and we know what M2 is. So we've got minus A on 4, Q minus R all squared equals minus A over 4, Q minus P all squared. And we can see that these minus A over 4s uh, actually cancel out. Uh, that uh, is if and only if, multiplying out the brackets now, 2RQ plus R squared equals Q squared again, minus 2PQ plus P squared. So now we've got these Q squared terms which uh, cancel out. Now what we can do, we can actually bring everything over to the other side. So we've got P squared minus R squared minus 2 pq plus 2 rq uh, is equal to 0 and then what we actually what we actually end up with uh, when uh, putting all the terms together is the following I've skipped a few steps but as an exercise uh, this uh, is what you would end up with well, I'll show you how I've got there. So p squared minus r squared is basically, uh, it's the difference of two squares. So that's uh, p plus r times p minus r. Now, if you take out a factor of uh, q for these uh, these two terms here, or 2q, you actually get p, uh, you actually get r minus p again, but then you can, you can, you can manipulate that to get a, uh, to get a p minus r. To, and then that's how you take a factor of uh, r minus p out, so I said p minus r. Then you want you want an r minus p actually, uh, and then you get this uh, you get this of remaining term here. Now that this whole thing has to equal zero, uh, and we also know that r is not equal to p, since it tells you here that r is actually uh, greater than q greater than p. So what that means is a uh, two q. Uh, minus uh, p minus r equals zero, which means two q. It has to be equal to uh, p 
plus r. Okay, so we've got um, so we've got that established. But it's talking about another tangent now. It's saying if and only if a tangent to C. So this is the condition, right, for both for for T one and T two to be parallel. Okay, so in that, as if and only if uh, this result holds. So let's now uh, let's consider uh, the tangent uh, to C. But this time it's talking about another tangent again, so we're going to call this t3 at the point where x equals q does not meet the curve again. Well, let's just find out what t3 is first, and all this not meeting the curve again, we can um, we can uh, take it from there. So now uh, let's uh, uh, consider tangent t3 of the curve c at uh, x equals q. Uh, I'm just going to read that question out as well guys just so it's just so it's a bit easier to just so you can follow what I'm doing. So again just as before m3 uh, equals f dash to q, uh, which is going to be equal to g of q plus q minus p uh, g dash of q. Okay, so I'm skipping steps now because uh, otherwise it's, it's just going to take ages and that's such that g of x is equal to a times x minus p x uh, minus r. So uh, that basically means uh, we can, if we differentiate g dash of x, we're going to have a times 2x uh, minus p plus r. Uh, therefore, g of q uh, will be equal to a times q minus p q minus r. Uh, g dash of q is going to be equal to a times 2q minus p plus r. Does that look familiar, guys? Um, so therefore, we we want to know what uh, m3 is. Um, okay. Uh, so m3 is equal to a times q minus p q minus r plus a q minus uh, p 2q minus p uh, plus r Okay, I'm just using that. Just using that. Um, just using this formula here, guys. That's where I've got these terms from here. This is g of q, and this is uh, in this bit here is uh, g dash of q, uh, including the a. Okay, and then the q minus p has just come from here. So if you're not sure, that's <laughs> that's where I've, uh, that's where I've got it from, guys. Okay, uh, now what we need to do is we can simplify this further. Uh, we can take a factor of a in q minus p out and also uh, let's yeah let's just work with that so you got q minus r plus 2q minus uh, p plus r now how can we go about this? Basically, if t if t one and t two are parallel, then for t one and t two to be parallel, this whole term here has to be zero because we established, didn't we, that two q has to equal p plus r for um, for t one and t two to be parallel. So what we can say 
so we can actually deduce now t1 is parallel to t2 if and only if m3 is equal to a times q minus p times uh, q minus r. Now, we still haven't got the equation of uh, t3 yet, have we? So we need to, that's something else that we need to do. We need, we need the equation of t3. So of course, uh, oh, let's have a look at this. Um, yeah, 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 okay. Yeah. Yeah, so generic equation again is y minus y1 equals m3 x minus x1. Uh, we already know, we know that it must, we know that y equals 0 and x equals x equals q I think. Okay, so I'm getting confused myself here. Uh, so we know that t two. We know that it, we know that at x equals q. Um, I'm going to put x one equals q. Y one is going to be equal to um, simply going to be f of q, and that's simply uh, just going to be equal to uh, q minus p times a. Uh, q minus p times q minus r. So we've got, so we know what y1 is, we know what x1 is, and we know what m3 is. So let's uh, let's put everything together now. So we've got a, is it, uh, y equals a, q minus p times q minus r, x minus q, plus uh, y1 so we're taking the y1 uh, to the other to the other side uh, that's q minus p times a q minus p again and q minus r now if we take out a factor of um, a and Q minus uh, P, what we end up with, well actually yeah we can we can take a factor of uh, Q minus R as well, uh, we actually get X minus Q plus Q minus R, so uh, your Q's also cancel out. So finally the equation of T3, uh, Y is equal to A Q minus P, Q minus R, and X minus P. Now this is the equation of T3, and that is if and only if uh, T1 is parallel to T2. Because uh, basically, in this condition of not being in place, uh, you wouldn't have, um, you wouldn't end up with uh, uh, G, you want to end up with 2q being equal to p plus r, which would affect the gradient, which in turn would affect uh, what the equation of um, what the equation of t3 actually is. Okay, guys. Um, now, what we need to do now is let's just suppose that uh, t3 meets with uh, t3 meets with uh, the curve. Because that's what it's talking about. Uh, it's saying, okay, so the tangent is parallel to, yeah, so we've we've already established this first bit. If and only if tangent to t, the point x, uh, x equals q does not meet the curve again. So let's just suppose, let's just suppose uh, that it does meet the curve again. Well, first of all, let's, um, 
we've got this equation C here. So T3 and C meet again. F. Now, the equation of uh, T3 is equal to A Q minus P Q minus R X minus P uh, equals the equation of C, which uh, we actually know anyway. A X minus P X minus Q X minus R. Now we can see we can cancel out the, uh, the A's and we can also cancel out uh, X minus P. Uh, so both these, uh, like the curve and the tangent, basically, well, they meet full stop if these conditions are fulfilled. Now, by observation, I can see that the only uh, the only solution um, is uh, at x equals q. So uh, therefore, t three and c uh, don't. Don't meet again because there's only one solution. And there, and there you have it, guys. That uh, that concludes the last part of question one. So the second part quite involved there, quite long-winded, and there's a lot of uh, a lot of work to be done there. But you know, if you just if you just break down the second part and just do as much as you can, and then everything will uh, come together. Uh, like I say I do enjoy doing these videos, and I do enjoy helping you guys out. Uh, I want to really make sure get get uh, get as many of you through um, uh, sort of passing your step examinations um, uh, because um, next year for sure uh, things will be back to normal there's been a bit of a break this year with the whole COVID-19 thing but like I say if you've got any questions at all um, do leave a comment below in the comment section I will do my best to uh, get back if you like this video as well smash that like button subscribe and tap that notification bell I will be coming out with more content in the future uh, I want to cover as many of these step paper questions as possible if you've got any questions as well if you uh, any 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 particular questions that you want me to talk about uh, tell me the year tell me the step paper tell me the question and I will um, make a video about it okay guys thank you very much and see you in the next video